Article 1 of the U.S. Constitution tells us we will have a Congress which will make the laws for this country. And since the Founding Fathers, when they wrote the Constitution, started with the Congress, that is where we will start. So a Congress is a meeting that lasts several years. Now, you could use the word Congress for any kind of big meeting, but when we talk about it in our government class, we are talking about the two-year meeting that occurs after we have elections. So right now, in the year 2021, we're in the 117th U.S. Congress. In 2022, we will have another election, and that will begin the 118th U.S. Congress. So every two years, we have an election and then have a Congress for two years. And that Congress is made up of the House of Representatives and the Senate together. And in those two years, they will make the laws for the United States. Not every idea will become a law. It's very rare for something to become a law, actually. The Founding Fathers wanted this lawmaking process to be slow and clumsy. They wanted to give people the opportunity to come speak for and against bill ideas, laws that might be passed. So we're in the 117th Congress now. In 2022, we'll have an election in November. And then in January of 2023, the 118th Congress would meet. But right now, the 117th Congress is meeting. So if you just take 117 times 2, multiply it by 2, that gives you the number of years that we've been having a government in the United States under the Constitution. Now, before we get too deep in this, we want to clarify a couple vocabulary words. A lot of people refer to America as a democracy. Well, that's not really true. If you think back to when you studied the ancient Greeks, they invented democracy. Democracy really is letting every citizen vote on everything. And of course, we can't really do that in America. We have way too many people. It would be insanely clumsy. And there'd just be too many items. It just wouldn't work for us. So what the Founding Fathers created was what we call representative democracy. Or perhaps a better word would be a republic. So a republic is when we actually send people to go vote for us. So We don't vote for everything. It would be kind of crazy for us to think about how we would vote on every little thing. So we pick people to go represent us in the nation's capital. So it's best to think of America as a representative democracy or a republic. Now let's talk about the Senate. So remember, the Senate has 100 total senators based on the fact that the Constitution says there will be two from every state, no matter how big or how small the state is. No matter how many people live in that state, there will be two senators. So Idaho has two senators. And South Carolina has two senators. Every state has two. Now, the way they run, according to the Constitution, how we run the elections, one-third of our senators are up for election every two years. All right, so let's just pick a state like Ohio. Ohio will have an election for senator in the year 2022. We did not have one in 2020. We didn't have an election, that is. So we kind of that was an off year for Ohio. In 2022, we will elect a senator. That senator is selected for a six-year term. So that means that senator will go to three Congresses because three uh, Congresses, and each of them are worth two years each, gives us six years. Three times two six. So a senator is there for three Congresses. Now this map you see on the screen is the current Senate map of the United States. Blue is the state that has two Democrat senators. Red is a state that has two Republican senators. A purple state 
has one of each. So Montana has a Republican senator and a Democratic senator, because every state has two. Ohio has one Republican and one Democrat. Now, there are a few kind of odd states. If you look at Maine, Maine has one Republican, and they also have one independent. So this senator does not really identify with either the Republicans or the Democrats, although typically he does tend to hang out more and vote with the Democrats. The same thing with Vermont. Vermont has one truly Democrat senator and then one who considers himself an independent. His name is Bernie Sanders. He most often, though, runs as a Democrat. In fact, he ran uh, for president as a Democrat, even though technically he says he's an independent. So when you break this map down, you're going to have 50 Republicans and 50 Democrats. So it's a very evenly divided Senate, as even as it can get. It's just showing you that the country is very evenly divided. And we know from the Constitution that when the Senate is evenly divided, meaning they vote on something and it's a tie, the vice president breaks that tie. And so now more than ever, probably in the last recent history, the vice president will be more involved in casting the tie vote if for some reason the Senate is tied. And being 50-50, there's probably a good chance it will be tied often. So the Constitution does, as I said earlier in other videos, mention a few officers, officials of each body, the House and the Senate. So speaking of the vice president, the vice president of the United States is, according to our Constitution, the president of the Senate. So she, uh, Kamala Harris, would vote to break the tie. And since she's a Democrat, technically the Senate is controlled by the Democrats. So we would say that the Democrats have a majority in the Senate, although very, very slim. Thanks to the vice president being a Democrat, they have control. But it's really only by one vote. Again, we have elections coming up in 2022, and so that could change. But as of right now in 2021, the Senate is evenly divided with the vice president being a Democrat breaking the tie, therefore making the Senate controlled by the Democrats. The Constitution also mentions another office in the United States Senate, and that office is the President Pro Tempore. Really, this is just a senator who's there in case the vice president is not there. And his name is Patrick Leahy. He's a senator from Vermont. He's a Democrat because now we said the Democrats technically have more votes, 51 to 50, if you count the vice president. So he would become the president pro tempore. It's more of a ceremonial position, but he is also in line for the president, for the presidency, I should say, if something were to happen to the president and the vice president and the speaker of the house, president pro tempore would become president. I don't know if you're a Batman fan, but Patrick Leahy is a Batman fan, and he was in all of the uh, Christopher Nolan Dark Knight Batman movies. And for some reason, they put him in the movie because he's kind of a powerful politician, and he loves Batman, so he, you might recognize him from the Batman movies that came out a while ago. So we have the vice president, who is the president of the Senate. We have the president pro tempore, who is there to run the Senate in case the vice president can't be there. And of course, every state has two senators. As of right now in the state of Ohio, your two senators in the year 2021 are Rob Portman, who's a Republican, and Sherrod Brown, a Democrat. That is why the map showed Ohio being purple, because we have a red and a blue. Republican is red, Democrats are blue. Ohio looked like a purple. Uh, Rob Portman is not running for re-election in 2022, so we'll see if Ohio votes for another Republican or if we go all the way to being a blue state by electing a Democrat. That will happen in 2022. So we've covered the Senate. There are 100 senators, two from every state. Hey, real quick question. How many senators does Arkansas have? Right, two. Wait, have you lived in Arkansas? Oh, you just know that every state has two. What about New Hampshire? Two. What about New Mexico? 
two. What about Indiana? Two. Every state's got two. And right now, in the year 2021, it's evenly divided. Let's move on to the House of Representatives. This is a map of what the House of Representatives looks like today. You can see it looks like a lot of red on there, but there's a lot of blue as well. There are 435 voting members in the House of Representatives. The way the House of Representatives works is that every single rep, all 435 of these members of the House of Representatives, are up for election every two years. And if you get elected, you go to one Congress, right? Remember, a Congress is a two-year. So unlike the senators, you get to go to three Congresses. A rep only goes to one. If you look at the map, it looks like there's just way more red. But remember, this is based on population. So, for example, Wyoming, the entire state of Wyoming, is one representative's district. But you can see the blue would be the Democrats. Those typically are where big cities are. And on the East Coast and the West Coast and in the Southwest, the Democrats are making uh, headway there. And they technically, by about 10 seats, have a majority in the House of Representatives. So we have the Democrats in charge of the House of Representatives. But again, this is a 2021 map. If in 2022, Republicans win more seats and Democrats lose seats across the country, then we would have the Republicans in charge of the House of Representatives, meaning they have a majority. Right now, the Democrats have a majority. And since they have the majority, the Democrats get to choose the Speaker of the House. The Constitution mentions one officer in the House of Representatives, and that officer is the Speaker of the House. And currently, the Speaker of the House is Nancy Pelosi. She's a Democrat. Remember, her party has more seats in the House of Representatives now in 2021. And so she runs or is in charge of the House of Representatives. But again, she will have to run for re-election in 2022, just like everybody else in the House of Representatives. She runs every two years. So she is our first female speaker of the House of Representatives, and she's had that job before. She seems to be one of the favorite leaders of the Democrats in the House of Representatives. Now let's think about where you live. Ohio has 16 representatives in the House of Representatives, and most likely you live in the 12th district. So this is a map of Ohio and how our state is broken up into 16 districts. You can see that the yellow, right in the middle of the state, the 12th district, is probably where you live, and your representatives, representative is a Republican named Troy Balderson. And the way it works out is he represents about 700,000 people. So in the yellow, the 12th district, there's about 700,000 people. In the 5th district of Ohio, up there in the corner, in the northeast corner, sorry, northwest corner, about 700,000 people. In the state of Wyoming, about 700,000 people. So one rep represents about 700,000 people. Troy Balderson is your rep. Now that would could possibly change because he has to run for re-election in 2022, like everyone else in the House of Representatives. So the United States Congress is made up of the House of Representatives, a two-year term for everyone, and the Senate in a term of six years. So if you're elected, you get to go to the Congress for three separate Congresses. The Congress is the House plus the Senate. They make the laws for the United States.